I got a brand new tie. I got a brand new twinkle in my eye. Do you know the reason why? I'm a brand new girl. I love to speak. That's the reason why I got a brand new tie, got a brand new suit. On the outside, gotta look my best. Put on my tap shoes, gray spats, double-breasted vest. I'm gonna wear my stick pin. I'm gonna have a whirl. I got a brand new tie. I'm a brand new girl. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I'm gonna sit with you in the garden, tell you a few things. You know, uh, I had a sister, Norma. I knew she was my sister because when she died, I had an ischemic infarction, or in poetic terms, a stroke in my pons, pronounced like the Fonz, who my sister Norma loved a lot. <laughs> my sister was deaf. From birth, she had a brittle bone disease. She was born with a broken collarbone, and four bones were broken in her ear. They called it osteoporosis imperfecta. What a life sentence for her to be called imperfecta. I'm glad she couldn't hear that she had osteoporosis imperfecta. It would have made her feel really sick, and it would have made her feel really sad. Her skin was transparent, like, like her love for me. After she died, I guess she kind of moved in inside me. Exactly inside me, as close as white on bread. I made that up, white on bread. I heard it's supposed to be white on rice, but I say white on bread. She was right directly under my skin. I mistook her blue veins through my skin for mine. I kept her well protected when she was inside me. After my stroke is when they found her on my MRI, right next to the dark spaces left in my brain, they removed her carefully and gave me lots of prescription drugs for the pain. After the operation, I felt lighter, not inspired much by anything, lightweight, dull, and then I felt a huge loss, along with that certain <coughs> kind of emptiness that I had never felt before. My neck didn't seem to get so exhausted holding up my brain. Her delicate removal left me bereft for someone who I didn't even know that I had. I was wet one day and then I was dry the next. I had lost the wet, juicy place inside me. When Norma was inside of me, I had motivation and talent. And I would write and draw all the time. The feeling that sometimes I was Tina Turner and a Buddhist must have come directly from her. <laughs> she was high-waisted and long-legged like Tina Turner, and she liked to sing. She gave me the feeling that I could fight like Angela Davis. I could suffer and paint like Frida Kahlo. I could be old like Louise Bourgeois, who was motivated enough to draw in the nighttime and on the wall next to her phone in the studio. I could walk Italian, you know, like Anna Magnani. I could be queer like Dusty Springfield. I could be funny like Ellen DeGeneres. I could masturbate like Patti Smith while I was thinking about Annie Lennox. I could be bad like my friend Gloria, who comes from the Virgin Islands. I could be edgy and poetic like Gloria's girlfriend, Audre Lorde. I could sing soulful and sultry like Amy Winehouse, who always makes me think of Norma. Life's a moment in space. When the dream is gone, it's a lonely place. I kiss the morning goodbye. Down inside, you know, we never know why. The road is narrow and long. When eyes meet eyes, and the feeling is strong. I turn away from the wall, I stumble, and I fall but I give it you at all. Before my stroke and before prescription drugs, my veins sounded like this. Ping, 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 ping. And now, after $180 a month in America, my veins now go ping. <laughs> I wonder what else got erased from my memory. Of course, I'll never remember what it is, because it's gone. 
there's this clean slate that exists now right at the pathway to my gray matter in my neck. Doesn't matter. It's like clear sailing, waiting to get filled with new ideas and prescription drugs. With you eternally mine, in love there's no measure of time. We planned it off to start. You and I live in each other's heart. We may be oceans away. You'll feel my love and I hear what you say. No truth is ever a lie. I stumble and I fall, but I give you it all. When my mom had shock treatments, they would on purpose pulverize part of her brain. That part would be gone forever. They didn't even have a DVD of it erasing what they called ungodly thoughts in her memory to make her normal. Doesn't matter. Could have been the place where she remembered love for somebody, special like Norma, who she loved most of all. I know that the shocks made her forget that she had loved my dad once. Before she died, she told me she didn't want to be buried next to Joe, her husband, my father, for eternity. I don't know if I was the only one she told that to. When she died, they lowered her right into the ground, her casket on top of his, ignoring her desire, as they ignored her desire all her life. I like to think that my mother would have wanted to be on top of him if, if they hadn't removed the memory of Joe, my dad. I wonder what I'll do now. Because I always get scared in the nighttime, but I know why. Norma used to call it midnight madness. She was scared in the dark, because in the dark, not only couldn't she hear, but she couldn't see. Her eyes were bad, they said. It was probably my fault, because once I got struck by lightning with my eyes open, looking out into the dark sky, the doctor said it should have burned my retina, but it didn't. It must have missed my retina and burned hers. I am a woman in love, and I'm talking to you. You know, I know how you feel, what a woman can do. It's a right I defend over and over and over again. Sometimes trying to go to sleep, I would feel Norma wrestling inside me, trying to get comfortable. She would listen to my heart beating on the left side and then on the right side. And then she'd start laughing when my legs would be jumping. Eventually, without knowing why, I would have to put my head in a cardboard box so I could go to sleep. Funny how, in hindsight, I should have felt her inside of me, or seen her in my shadow, at least. I spend so much time now sitting and thinking or lying and thinking about her. Sometimes when my thoughts won't stop, I stand up really tall and I let all my thoughts drift down to my feet and my and my ankles. Mortality is on my mind, heavy on my mind, in the shadowy part of the brain where Norma used to be. You know, I don't want to be Mr. Hindsight like in South Park. You know, he's, he shows up in tragedies and lists all the things that should have been done in order to avert the tragedy. <laughs> Mr. Hindsight can fly and he's considered a superhero. There was this fire with 14 or 13 people trapped at the top of the building, and no one could get to them. He lands in the crowd and he says, what's wrong here? So they tell him, there's 14 or 13 people trapped up in that building and no one can get to them. And it's burning. He looks at the building and he says, well, if they had built a fire escape all the way up to that floor, the people could have crawled out and saved themselves. Or, if they hadn't built a building right next to that building, the fire department could have wheeled right up there and put their ladder up. And they would have saved the people in the building. And the crowd goes, ooh, ah, wow. And Mr. Hindsight says to the crowd, well, my work here is done. And he turns around and flies off leaving the 14 or the 13 people burning in the building. You know, life's a moment in space. When the dream is gone, it's a lonely place. I kiss the morning goodbye. <coughs> Downside, you know, we never know why. 
The road is narrow and long when eyes meet eyes. The feeling is strong. I turn away from the wall. I stumble and fall, but I give you it all. I'm a woman in love and I know how it feels. I'd do anything to get you into my world and hold you within. It's a right I defend it over and over and over and over and over and over again. Thank you.